it's December 14th, which technically, if you want to look at it that way, 12 days until Christmas Day. And it got me to thinking. 12 days. 12 videos. Hmm. I know. After a four-year hiatus, it's back. The 12 days of OTR Essential Christmas. We're going to try and have fun the next almost two weeks. Try not to be a bunch of mamby pambies. Try not to get your freaking twats in a bunch. Let's have some fun. And I figured what better way to kick off the 12 days of OTR Essential Christmas than with 12 character ideas for WWE. Some of them might be crazy, but they might just be crazy enough to get the guys over. And while it is a festive season, I want to make sure that you feel the spirit of giving and caring and sharing. I want your ideas for characters for WWE. I want to know your thoughts on my proposals for characters for WWE. Let's go and have some fun now. Drum roll, please. Anybody? Anybody? It'll be me. 12 character ideas for WWE starts now. Number 12, Catering Jason. The whole premise, you bring back JTG. His whole gimmick revolves around him stirring up shit at the catering table backstage at Raw, SmackDown, NXT. Doesn't matter. He gets offered to wrestle, gets paid to wrestle, but ultimately no-shows the match and hides throughout the arena with a big, big plate full of food from catering. You can do Backstage vignettes and segments, the crap with Van Dango and Breeze, who gives a crap, where in the world is JTG? You can send him off to award shows where the whole premise isn't trying to meet the actors and the superstars, he's trying to see what's on the catering table. That's what matters. I mean, it's not like he really got over as a singles wrestler anyways, so I'd be fine with bringing JTG back. We need catering Jason in our lives. Number 11 is No Hope Hawkins also known as Kurt Hawkins. And no, Hawkins doesn't fear Grimm because ultimately who gives a crap? But the whole premise of this gimmick is that he is the world's worst wrestler. He doesn't trash talk to win and get in the opponent's head to try and gain an upper hand in win. He tries to talk trash to throw people off of their game, to throw himself off of his own game so that way they will stumble into victories. He gets stood up by girls for dates all the time. His friends leave him behind. Nobody cares. Nobody likes him. The guy just legitimately has no hope. At some point in time, 50 of you will probably get this reference, but he can bring in the tulip. And then after he faces the tulip, here comes Brother Midnight and oh baby, we've got an internet classic on our hands and you could do it at the freaking GTS arena, whatever the hell that is. No Hope Hawkins is the future of WWE. Number 10 involves another repackaging of a character. You, Thomas Cruz. That's right, Apollo Cruz will now be known as Uncle Tom Cruz. He's always looking to appeal to and appease the white masters of WWE. He is a persistent foil of the New Day and any other black wrestlers trying to get over. He says they represent everything that is wrong with his people today. They are the ones that hold his people back. He is okay with no black WWE champions. In fact, he advocates for it. He refuses title shots of his own because he doesn't feel like he's worthy. He does not want to rock the boat and potentially affect his position. He wants to make sure that others don't get those opportunities as well because he figures the best way to survive is just get along. He ultimately becomes Vince McMahon's personal enforcer of racial righteousness and comes out on TV relatively consistently and advocates for a separate but equal WWE where you put all of the black wrestlers in WWE into that one promotion so you'll get 10 times the athleticism for a tenth of the pay. Number 9, The Spudmaster formerly known as Seamus. He's a fucking ginger Irish fuck who enjoys his pints of Guinness, trying to hide from the kids who are always after his lucky charms. He randomly goes around backstage shooting people in the forehead with a 
spud gun. He renames his fist, hash rounds, and tater tots. He spends a lot of his additional free time trying to chase snakes off of cliffs and routinely engages in drunken acts of soccer hooliganism and Northern Ireland liberation activities. Spudmaster, I guess it gives a whole new meaning to getting potatoed in a wrestling ring. Anyways, number eight, the cuck. And what exactly is the cuck? Well, even though he's white, he hates white people, he feels incredibly awkward in large groups of white people, calls them the white devil, blames them for so many of the ills of society today. He tries to steal as much black culture as he possibly can and make it his own and tries to associate himself with being black. He has black girlfriends. He talks about how black lives matter, fuck the police, and ultimately he enjoys watching his girlfriend get plowed by big black bulls. He recruits Big E to do her in the pink. He recruits Xavier Woods to do her in the stink. And when things need to get a little freaky nasty, he recruits Rich Swan to choke the bitch. What? Too soon? And now some of you may be asking, who exactly could be the perfect cuck? And some of you are going to say Jeff Schlegel, and I say fuck you. No, when you look at the entire roster of WWE, there's nobody that screams out cuck more than Enzo Amore. Number seven, the feminazi. Now with the feminazi, what all does that encapsulate? Well, you need somebody who blames men for everything, who always protects women, always stands up for women, always proclaims them to be truthful no matter what, lives to rage against Donald Trump's tweet storm of sexism. He's someone that's kind of fem feminine who is frankly pretty much a bitch. Uh, interrupts matches to talk about how women should be in the main event of Raw and SmackDown and pay-per-view specifically his big push would be to get women to main event WrestleMania because anything a man could do a woman could do just as fine if not better and he implores women to cover their boobies and show their intellect not their bodies y you know you need somebody for this that you could believe would be this type of bitch you need somebody that would be believable as being kind of suspect and kind of being a feminazi. I've got it. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Six, the socialist Sami Zayn. He comes out and he talks about how Canada is a glorious place where marijuana is legal, gay marriage is legal, and most importantly of all, they have universal health care, so they take care of their sick, unlike these stupid Americans. He talks about how the McMahon family are the representation of the evil of the 1% of the United States. He wears trunks that have Justin Trudeau's face emblazoned on the backside, and Bernie Sanders' face emblazoned on the codpiece portion, his whole gift. He's trying to get the wrestlers to form a union. He's all about redistributing the wealth from the 1% of the roster, which is the Breakfast Club, to the rest of the WWE. He talks in the South about the rednecks in the hillbillies and how they vote against their own self-interest and does all of these things, calls them inbreeders, calls them child molesters, you know, a real genial type of guy. Imagine the heat the socialist Sami Zayn can hate. Cause because he's already inherently unlikable. Now you make him a socialist and you talk about all these things? Imagine him going into certain segments of Canada with Justin Trudeau's face on his ass and other places with Bernie Sanders on his cock. He'd probably like that. Number five, the conservative cowboy Braun Strowman, who consistently supports things that are against his own self-interest. He's a loud and proud open carry advocate who cuts these quasi-creepy gun-loving videos on the WWE's YouTube channel. He believes that the very top of the WWE should be getting more title shots, aka the Breakfast Club, not less. And by giving them more title shots, those title shots will somehow magically be redistributed and trickled down to the rest of the roster. He questions others' manhood. Finishing move would be known as the snowflake smash, but ultimately, unfortunately, in true conservative cowboy fashion, he would be eventually brought down by a scandalous affair with a young WWE ring boy.
Number four, Family Dollar Pebbles, also known as currently Jason Jordan, the generic, much, much cheaper version of Dwayne Johnson. Instead of asking if you like Poon Tang Pie, he's going to ask if you like cheesecake. Instead of asking if you can smell what he's cooking, he's going to ask if you can smell what he's baking. His finishing maneuver is the kitty's knee drop. He tries to do the people's eyebrow, however the hell you do it, and instead he goes cross-eyed, which he already kind of is anyways. Eventually, after several years of being forced down your throats with nowhere near the impact or success of the real rock, Family Dollar Pebbles goes to Hollywood to film Fast and Furious 16, Hobbs has hemorrhoids, and then comes back to try and push the movie on the WWE universe and tries to get... Sandals to buttholes trending, not boots to asses. Number three, Bald News Baron. Like Bad News Barrett, but inherently much more awesome. He goes around the locker room trying to help guys come to grips with their receding hairlines, and he does it for all of you in the social media world as well. He shamelessly plugs his miracle bald news cream, which a couple of rubs a day will get the hair to come back this way. You get months of vignettes with him trying to find the doctor who did LeBron's plug job because he feels like he needs some of that action. And eventually, he gets a couple of people to get the ball news cream. But then they come looking for him because they realize now they can't get an erection. Number two, so many of us talk about how Bray Wyatt bores the brakes off of us and how badly he needs to be repackaged. Well, I've got the solution here. For now and forever, we shall refer to Bray Wyatt as Rear Admiral Lingus. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, anal lingus. Everything he says and does revolves around buttholes and men's asses. He has a lovely lady assistant named Sister Snowball, a.k.a. Jojo. Instead of doing the weird, stupid, ranting promos of the past, instead, it's very simple. He apparates, grabs your ass, and disappears. In the ring, he's playing grab ass, and he's trying to do all types of weird things, talking about how he's the eater of ass and the diver of muff. He's got two hired hands. And bring back the family. Fuck it, why not? Eric Rowan will be his top sidekick, known as Cunnilingus. And Luke Harper would be Staff Sergeant Rod because ultimately nobody knows how to handle a staff quite like Staff Sergeant Rod. Their theme song would change. Forget the fireflies and crap. It's all about milk, milk, lemonade around the corner fudge is made. And when he's not going tipsy, tipsy, dipsy, dipsy in the ring trying to play grab ass, what's he going to do? He's going to spend his free time on a ship full of semen hunting sperm whales. Rear Admiral Lingus, Anal Lingus. Now that's how Bray Wyatt would instantly become one of the most interesting characters in WWE history. The Eater of Ass. Now what you've heard so far are 11 outstanding character suggestions for WWE. But number one is number one for a reason because it is the best of all. That's why it's number one. Broke Matt Hardy. Now you could talk about broken Matt Hardy and woken Matt Hardy, and you could take all of those, yes, and shove them straight up your keister. Broke Matt Hardy would be the man. He thinks about getting a job, wrestling, and decides it's more profitable not to because of welfare and EBT and so forth. Why would he give that up? He also gets government-assisted childcare. He gets Section 8 vouchers. Why would he want to get a job wrestling? Vanguard 1 would be a paper airplane. Senor Benjamin would just be some random panhandler from the local convenience store looking to get 25 cents so that way he can go buy some Mickeys. Broken Matt Hardy becomes Broke Matt Hardy and he offers to sell his EBT for 50 cents on the dollar because he wants that cash in hand. Not using the food stamps for the purpose it's originally designed for. He takes his wick. Instead of getting milk and eggs and kicks and cheese, he takes it and trades it for dime sacks. And then everything that he does eventually culminates in the first of the month brawl for all at the Walmart parking lot is where it starts. And man, it's vicious. You've got everybody 
EBT is loaded, it is go time, it's a zoo, and eventually all the fighting spills over into the section where people can get T-bones and shrimp, because ultimately that's what EBT is designed for. He tries to recruit wrestlers to sell them their kids' social security numbers to him, giving them a 33 to 50% profit share, so that way he can claim them on his taxes, so that way he can get more out of the child tax credit. He ultimately decides to recklessly have more kids kids with different women that he can't afford because he ultimately feels like the government has his back and says he's not working, child support is only going to hit him up for $55 a month. And all the while, he makes sure he's dressed to the nines and rocks name brand clothes that he can't buy that he uses other people's money to get and brags about how he bought up them all. And ultimately, he's dressing up King Maxil in some family hand-me-downs. Now, I don't know about you. You might have loved broken Matt Hardy. You may even want to enjoy Woken Matt Hardy. But to me, the greatest character idea for WWE is Broke Matt Hardy. <laughs> yes, the seven deities talk about ramen soup and budding lunch meat and hot dogs. Wonderful! There you have it, my 12 great character ideas for WWE. You might think they're dumb, you might think they're stupid, and ding, you're probably right on both of them. But doesn't matter at this point, we're trying to have some fun. I'm kicking off the 12 days of OTR Essential Christmas, so this is the video you got. It wasn't necessarily the video you asked for or wanted, but I felt like it was the video you needed. Just like here at OTR Essential, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I hope you enjoyed this video and check back next time for the 11th day of OTR Essential Christmas where we're going to talk about the 11 hottest women in professional wrestling. That should be a dandy.